Hello, Internet. Uh, I'm here with another pet game update. Um, I've alluded to this in the previous couple of videos, but there is a bad bug in pet game that we need to fix. And again, I've kind of been aware of it. Even from the beginning, I knew I was doing this weird thing. Let me just show you the bug, and then, and then we'll talk about it. So the bug will manifest. This is one way to make it manifest. If we have two tabs um, that are looking at your pet, uh, let's see just one thing. If I feed this pet, for example, zero energy now it has three. If we go back and look at this pet, it says it has zero energy. And if I try and explore, for example, it's going to say pet is out of energy. Uh, but it isn't. It has plenty of energy over here. And we can reload. Excuse me. Uh, and see, and now we can explore. One, two, three. Let's go exploring. But now even worse, okay, the pet is really out of energy. And, and we can confirm this. We can look at the database. Let's see. This is a uh, Madeline who has, uh, or no, sorry, Tidbit who has zero energy, right? Uh, but this tab says that Tidbit still has three energy. And now I can explore again. <laughs> and now Tidbit will actually have two energy. If we refresh here, Tidbit has now gained energy that it had, that had been lost. In this version of Pet Game, it's not so bad for a couple of reasons. One of them is it doesn't really matter if you kind of got free energy because you can get free energy anyway. And also, we didn't really see it here, but if you were working on an old pet, I mean, it's funky, but it's not like the worst thing. But, but what if exploring gave you items, for example? Um, and, you know, what if you need food to feed the pet to give it energy? It's not just free. I mean, the, the basic game that's set up here assumes that you're going to put limits on all this stuff. Because right now, there's no point. You just press the feed and explore buttons as much as you want without limit and get whatever, right? So it kind of doesn't matter. But once you start to put in, no, there's limited food um, and the, the levels are important. And there's different actions you can take based on, you know, and you're getting items out of exploring and all these things. Um, this becomes an item duplication bug where, or something where, like on one tab, you could feed an item to a pet and on the, and then spend all the energy. But then you could go to another tab and, and still have that energy and spend it again, even though it was only one food item you fed, right? Things like that. There's a lot of bugs that come out of this. Another thing that could happen is what if you make a way to buy and sell pets with other players? It's possible that you could be looking at a pet on one tab that on another pet, sorry, on another tab, you sold that pet, but now you can go back and, and like still take actions on that pet, even though it doesn't belong to you anymore. Like that's really weird. So we've got all these kinds of bugs and, and we need to fix them clearly. Um, and the reason, again, I mentioned, I'd say like, why did I do this? Cause I kind of sort of knew that there was a little bit of a problem. Partly I didn't realize exactly how big of a problem I was creating. I did something weird. Uh, but the reason I did the weird thing uh, that I kind of knew was was maybe not great is it made the code simpler. And I really want this game to be something that even if you don't have coding experience, you can come in here. Names make sense more or less. We've got update and save changes. Why is it got to be async? Uh, maybe that's confusing and weird. Alert. We want to show an alert. OK, right. I I'm hoping that a lot of these things you can just kind of even if you don't know coding, you can copy paste your way and, and make a game. So I made some decisions with that goal in mind, but one of those decisions created this bug, and so that's the decision we're gonna we're gonna fix. Um, so let's let's start with do explore, um, and fix it up. So again, the problem is on one tab uh, we've run out of energy, but on another tab we seem to have energy, and so we were able to operate on this like old version of the pet. That's a pretty easy bug to fix in a way. What we want to do is rather than believe whatever the player is looking at on the web page. Uh, knowing that it might be old data is we want to get the the freshest data whenever we take an action, right? If, we, if we're going to explore, if we're going to feed a pet, we want to make sure we use the most recent version of the pet that, that is available. Um, and that means getting that pet out of the database. The database is the place that has the true correct data, right? That is the, the source of truth. Um, so, oh, sorry, spoilers. I did update the readme. We'll get to that later. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yes, let's fetch the, the newest version of the pet. So I'm going to do a couple things that make it a little weird. Um, if you recall, we at the start of, of the page on initialized for this page, at the start of the page loading up, we get all the pets into this list called my pets. It is a list of pets called my pets. And that's what we're looping over and showing to you and, 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 and is what we're operating on, right? Then we say, okay, for each pet in my pets, draw the pet. But this pet variable right here, this is one of the important pieces, is we say we're going to operate on that. We're going to pass that pet, which might be stale, might be an old version that you're looking at, into do feed. 
And so now you're going to operate on this old version of the pet. We don't want to do that anymore. So what I'm going to do instead is pass in just the ID of the pet. And then we will relook up the database, um, the pet from the database based on that ID. So if you've done database stuff before, or I don't know, even if you, you, you may have gained kind of this, this intuition, you may have seen this stuff, right? An, an ID, it's not a weird concept, but it is particularly important, I guess I would say for databases. The, the ID, it's unique, right? You know, no two pets can be number 14 or 13 or 12 or whatever. Um, but also this ID never changes. That's another important thing. You should never change the ID of something um, in the database. It needs to be consistent. It is like your one guaranteed truth about a row here that will never ever change. And, and you want that. It's a super helpful concept to have. Like you know that you can uniquely identify this thing. It's not going to change out from under you, right? Unlike energy and experience and who owns this pet. All those things might change, but ID never will. It's always ID number six in this case or two. Um, so that's important. And, and that because we have that, that's what lets us do these things. We can say, okay, we're going to update a pet. We're going to we're going to go by ID because we can rely on that ID to be consistent. Um, no matter what else happens, you've got a bajillion tabs open, you've changed a million things, it doesn't matter, we have ID. So that's what we're going to rely on instead. We're going to rely on the ID of the pets. We're going to pass the pet ID into do feed and the pet ID into do explore. Um, so now let's let's update that. We need to change that. And if you hover over ID, you can see it tells you this is a long. It says argument type long is not assignable to parameter type. We get the fun, fun <laughs> programming speak. Um, so what this is telling us is the pet ID is of type long. What is a long? A long is just an, a number that can be even bigger. <laughs> uh, we don't get infinite space, right? The IDs can't go up to infinity because that would take up infinite hard drive space, uh, which isn't available in this universe, unfortunately. So we have to have limits to everything. Um, a normal integer goes up to like two or four billion, depending in C sharp, it's going to go up to like two billion. And then a long, I forget what the max value is. It's something huge. So your game can support more than two billion pets. You're probably good because each one needs a unique ID. When we run out of IDs, we run out of pets, but it's okay. You can have well over 2 billion. Um, again, I forget the exact value. It's something absurd. I mean, let's ask the internet. Um, max value of int in C sharp. Or sorry, max value of long in C sharp. There, you may have seen briefly the, the um, 2 billion I was talking about. Uh, so here, is this it? 2 billion uh, list of longs. Hmm, I'm surprised we're just not... Maybe it's somewhere deep in here. Here we go. All right, so long. Nine whatever the hell. <laughs> what is this? Thousand million billion trillion. I don't, is that quadril? I don't even know. Some huge number. So right, you can have negative technically. We would never give our, our um, pets negative IDs. Uh, but anyway, it's this ridiculous number. That's how many pets you can have. So you're fine with, with the long. Um, so anyway, what does this error mean? Sorry, getting back to the point. Now we're giving do explore long, but saying, but I'm expecting you to give me a pet. You're supposed to give me a pet object. That's what you used to do. Yes, we did. We are doing that, but we're not anymore. We want to do instead a pet ID. And I'll just update both of them. We have do explore. Oops, geez. GitHub Copilot. Maybe I should turn. I've noticed in some videos, like I, you can see some people, they have GitHub Copilot, but they'll have it turned off. And I've, I've seen that in videos like, well, I got GitHub Copilot turned off. It's so useful. Um, but it does sometimes pop up extra code while I'm typing. So maybe maybe that's why. Um, but OK, back to the point. So we have do explore, we have do feed, we're getting a pet ID. But now what well, we do need a, a pet object to, you know, change its energy and um, give it experience points and whatever else happens in, in these functions. Um, so we're going to look up a new one. Uh, one thing to do, we're going to take this from the begin from the bottom. So again, we need to look up from the database, right? And at the bottom here, we say, OK, get access to the database. That's what this line does. All this silly, crazy, weird line, if you're not familiar with C sharp or any, any framework, this probably looks like gobbledygook. But the main point is we have this new variable called DB. That's what var means. It's a variable DB. And it lets us do database stuff like save changes. It also lets us get pets out of the database. And that's what we want to do. So I'm going to take that from the bottom here and slap it up on the top. And now we're going to get a pet. So we'll make a new variable, to hold the pet. Uh, GitHub Copilot is trying a suggestion. It's not totally unreasonable, but not what we want. So I'm ignoring it. I want to find, sorry, I want to find the first pet. So we're going to say first or default. Um, there is also just a first async, but it's, imp it's important to use the default one, which we'll, we'll talk to in a, about in a second. Um, so we want to find the first pet. 
where, and you can do any name you want here. Sometimes I see people do X a lot. I'll just go with X. So basically we're saying we're, we're going to look at all these pets and we want to find one that matches some criteria. And this is how we start saying what the criteria What is the criteria? Well, whatever you're looking at, it needs to have an ID that equals a pet ID. That's what we're trying to find. But I want another criteria because again, as I mentioned, maybe the pet no longer exists. Maybe you make it, so maybe pets can die in your game. I don't know. Maybe you can sell pets to other players. That's a, uh, an important thing as mentioned before. So I want to do this. Yes, I want to do this. The GitHub Copilot has suggested. I want to check that the owner ID of whatever thing we're considering, right? Two things have to match. We need the ID to match, whatever ID. But we also want to double check, just to make super duper sure, that the owner is, is in fact the current player who's currently logged in. And you get the ID of the currently logged in player with this funny bit of <laughs> of code. Uh, that's something that I added from Pet Game. And you can, I've mentioned this in previous videos, but for anything, you can say go to declaration implementation though these will both get you to similar ish kind of places um to find out like well what is that info thing how is it defined and, and if you want to go and see how i get the currently logged in user you can go poking in there to figure that out um, but if you're not worried about that just know this is the incantation that will get you the current player id okay so this will this will do it this will get the current id um but you may notice and this is fun github copilot again you're so helpful um, we've got the squiggly red underline. Why is it here? It says dereference of a possibly null reference. What does that mean? What it means is that we said first or default means that we want you to find the first thing that matches, or if nothing matches, a defaultish value, which in this case is going to be null. And, and, and then this complains, it says, well, what if it got null? If, right, saying you, you can't ask for the energy on a pet that doesn't, maybe doesn't exist. That's nonsense. That'll, that'll break, that'll crash. And so we're not allowed to proceed. So we need to do what GitHub Copilot is suggesting, which is you need to check, is the pet null? Um, does the pet not exist? Um, and that sounds like a great message. Thanks, GitHub Copilot. Yeah, show a modal titled oops that says pet not found. Um, I think I would like to do one other thing, though, which is to load up the pets. But maybe we'll get to that. No, this is the time to do it. So there's a couple things. Let me zoom out a little bit so I can um, show this whole function. Ooh, that's too much. It's going to be really small. Um, Let's, uh, okay, this is mostly the whole thing. Oh, here, I can make, oh, my pointer's just a little bit. Okay, <laughs> so here's the whole explore function. Um, we're updating this pet, but this is like a new copy of the pet that we've pulled out of the database, fresh, fresh out of the database, the latest data. Um, we want to then, again, the bug we're fixing is maybe the player is looking at old data. So maybe they see a different value. They clicked explore. And actually, the pet is different than the one they're seeing. So we want to make sure that after we're done doing all these changes to their pet, that they do get to see the latest version of the pet. Because this isn't, this isn't going to do anything. In fact, even, even if they were looking at the newest, again, version of that pet on the page, when you click do explore, it's going to take away an energy. But again, this is on a different kind of copy that's, that's in the memory of the game. It's got, it's got two copies of the pet that's kind of holding on to. One is what you're seeing, and one is what's being worked on here in this pet variable. And then after this function is done, this pet variable is forgotten, and we haven't updated that list of pets that the player is looking at. So, so that's what we want to do. So if we look up at the top, we've got this. When the page first loads, we get the list of pets. Again, we know that. That's how we can see the pets. That's what's kind of leading to this bug. We want to we wanna do this again. Basically, we would, we would like to load up the pets again a second time to show the newest, greatest data. Um, so I'm, you could call on initialize. Um, I kind of mentioned this in another video. Actually, I more than kind of mentioned it. I kind of rambled about it a little bit. Um, but on initialized is called when the page is loaded. And you might want to do lots of things here. In the future, you might put other things that happen when the page is loaded. And we wouldn't want to call page loaded function some other time. You know, right now, all it does is load the pets. And so you could throw in the bottom here. You could say, OK, let's just call uninitialized async to get the latest pets. But what if you put in other stuff there? It, will, it can get confusing. So what I would rather do is make something explicitly for loading pets. This doesn't exist yet, so I'm going to make it. We'll make a new thing called load pets. And this will load the pets. And now, rather than calling uninitialized, I'll call, what, like, what do I really want to do? What I really want to do is load pets. So that's what I'm going to say to do at the bottom. And actually, this is, sorry, this is do feed. This is the wrong function. We want to explore. We're going to want it there, too. But at the bottom of, of on explore, we're going to want to reload the pets. And, and that will update this list of my pets, which, again, is the list that is seen on the page. So just to summarize, and I'll 
zoom back in a little bit on the text, we show you the pets. We're going to explore, but we're just going to pass, pass in the pet ID, not trusting. Again, we don't trust that the, the user is seeing the latest data. Maybe they've, they've switched around tabs and they're seeing old data. So let's just pass in the ID. We'll load up a fresh copy of the pet. We're going to do another check. Maybe in the future you make it so you can sell pets. So let's just be careful and not assume that we'll, that we'll find a matching pet. And then we'll do all the all this code now remains the same, blah, 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 blah. Um, little detail, we don't need DB update anymore. And, and the call to DB update is what was the red flag in my brain of maybe I'm doing, I know I'm kind of doing something wrong here, but it's really easy to, to understand. So I'm going to leave it in. That's the thing we don't need anymore. So we, we can get rid of it. Um, but we're going to save changes uh, from everything. And this is why I feel like leaving in DB update makes more sense. But when we get a new, when we get a variable that points the database and we start asking the database for things, it automatically knows what to update when we say save changes. We don't have to tell it update this pet. It knows to because we asked the database for the pet in the first place. So anyway, we can get rid of the DB update, we save changes, and then we load the pets so that the player, because again, this is a separate copy of the pet. It's not the same pet the player has been looking at. So let's load up all the pets so that they get the the user gets to see the, the, the freshest copy of, of what's in the database. And we're going to do the same thing on do feed. Um, in fact, I'm just going to copy this. If you wanted to pull this out into a function, right? Anytime you're copy pasting, it's kind of a sign, especially when it's this much code. You're like, maybe I could pull this out into, uh, you know, a function so I don't have to write the same five lines over and over again. You probably could. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Um, down here, right? We don't need these lines. We don't need to create the DB context anymore. We don't need to call update. Um, database has got it figured out. Save changes, load pets, and we're done. So let's uh, restart the game. Um, where did I put it? Oh, I've minimized it somewhere. I've got a million windows open. This always happens. Here we go. Nope, that's the wrong one. Oh, it's not the right, wrong one anymore. It opened it there. Where's pet game? Here we go. Eh, whatever. You can see I've been looking at free sounds. It doesn't matter. All right, let's go back to my house. I see two pets. Let's see. I'm just going to use duplicate tab. Be my house. All right, we've got two pets. Two energy here for tidbit on this page. Two energy on, sorry, this tab rather. So let's explore and use up all the energy. And now, again, if, if we look here, what was it, tidbit? Tidbit has zero energy. That's the true data. If we look here, it says, oh, you've got two. Or sorry, it has zero energy. Gosh, I shouldn't say these things. Sorry, it has zero energy. That is the true state of the data. We spent all the energy on that other tab. This tab has old data. When I explore, now it works. It goes and looks for the latest version of the data, says, oops, the pet is out of energy. You can't do this. Um, and we're still kind of seeing old data here. That's something you could say, maybe if they're out of energy, you want to reload the pets because they're seeing something funny and old. You can, you can tidy that stuff up yourself, but we have fixed the bug. The other bug we have fixed is let's say Madeline, um, that's this pet here. Let's say I sold this to another player. I sold it to uh, j at j.com, some different player. On another tab, let's pretend, right? This feature doesn't exist in the game right now, but maybe you've added it, or maybe you delete. I could even say delete this whole row. <laughs> Either way, um, when I try to now take any kind of action with this pet, this pet has enough energy, but now when I say explore, it says, nope, that pet's not found, right? It didn't belong to me. I, I shouldn't be seeing it. So if... I guess the only other thing I would say, if you want to do, just to point you in the right direction, um, is maybe if the pet doesn't exist here, you would call load pets. Um, or maybe if the pet doesn't have an, enough energy, you would call load pets. Um, I think one, one thing I don't like about calling load pets if the pet doesn't have enough energy is like if we go here and we can see the pet doesn't have enough energy, we don't need to reload. This is the latest data. But you could do something else for that. You could say, um, you know, don't show. If the pet, um, whoops, if the pet energy is less than one, or sorry, if the pet energy is greater than zero, that's the only time I want to show explore. Don't show explore if the pet doesn't have energy. And then maybe you would say, oh, right, that makes sense to do. Don't show them something they can't, don't show the player an action they can't take. And then if they do take the action, even though there's no energy, you know you're on a tab where they're seeing old data, so it would make sense, let's reload the pets. So anyway, these are all little things that, that you can clean up. Uh, I'm not going to put that in the base game, but this change I will. And there's something else I want to show you um, that I think I should do more often that I haven't done in previous videos. And that's to look at a comparison. We can kind of go over all the changes we made one last time at the end. Um, and this comparison that you're seeing, this is, uh, I'm using Rider. That's the IDE that I'm using. 
But if you have, and if, if you're using Visual Studio or VS Code, they have the same feature. Um, you might not be able to, to look at this depending on how you downloaded Pet Game. I can talk about that in another video if that's of interest. But for the purposes of the, of the video now, I just want to kind of go over, let's, let's, let's summarize, you know, let's go back over what, what did we change really? Um, okay, we're no longer passing in pets to do feed and do explore. Again, we don't trust that the player is looking at the latest version of the pet. It might be some stale version. So instead of operating on the pet, we're going to pass in just the ID for do feed and do explore. What else did we do? Uh, we made it so that on initialized async, we call load pets because we wanted to take load pets out to, into its own function because that's something we might want to do a lot now. There's a lot of instances where we might say load up the newest date of the pets. Player's looking at something old. Uh, do feed we can see is changed. We're no longer taking a pet. We're taking a pet ID. And we've moved this, this code up here, creating the database context. That goes up top. And now we load a fresh copy of the pet straight out of the database. Um, and then from there, it's basically the same. We say, you know, pet energy, increase it, show a modal, all that stuff remains the same until the end. We don't have to make the database. We already did that up top, not make it, but you know, get a variable that lets us do database stuff. We already did that up top, so we don't have to do that down here anymore. And we no longer have to call DB update. DB update, again, is the kind of red flag. If you're writing DB update, um, that should be a signal to you that you might be doing something wrong. And indeed, in pet game, I was doing something wrong. Uh, we had opened ourselves to this multi-tab item duplication creating bug. Like, there's tons of bugs. I keep saying item duplication because that's a very, I don't know if it's very common. That's a bug that some MMOs have had before. It's like, oh, you can dupe items. Like, that's like a Diablo thing. Like, I don't know. Those are the sorts of things that, that can happen. We have made that old classic bug in, in pet game. What a nightmare. And then do explore is very much the same. We are no longer getting access to the database down here. We do it up top. We get a fresh copy of the database, and then we do all the same stuff. Whatever we want to do before that, that remains unchanged. Um, then save changes, and again, load up the pets. Uh, to make sure the player has the freshest copy of the data. And that's it. Um, at the beginning, I mentioned spoilers, read me. I've changed the read me. I'm going to have a little notice at the top that um, this makes following along with some old videos difficult. Uh, this needs to be a core part of the game. I don't want to have a buggy version. I mean, taking a step back, the way I've been doing these videos is each video adds something to the base game, but then it's only the base game. I never build off of previous changes, but but this needs to be an exception. Like this bug fix is important enough. It needs to be in the base game. So any videos released before the release date of this video are going to um, contain this this bug. Um, and and you, and if you're following along, it might be a little weird. So I add a little note in the readme. It's like, hey, you're going to need to follow along. Um, but sorry, it's a very important bug that I fixed, and then I'm, I'm going to link to the video. So. That all these changes are going straight back into the base game for everyone. Um, and yeah, again, depending on the order you watch these videos, if you've just, if somehow this was the first pet game video you watched, uh, interesting, uh, be aware that when you go back to previous videos, um, th this bug fix will not be in them. So anyway, that's it. I hope that was interesting. Um, I think the next couple videos I'm going to make, uh, one, I thought it would be cool to do achievements. And two, someone asked that I do a video based on the breeding video I did. Um, to let you layer different um, patterns onto a pet and maybe even of different colors. Um, because that was something I kind of alluded to in that video, but I, but I didn't go so far as to do. So I'll do another video about that. Um, and that'll, that'll probably be coming up, I don't know, in a week or two or something. And then if you've got other ideas for things you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments or, I don't know, stalk me on the internet, I guess. I don't know. You can find me on GitHub, right, where, where this code is. You can, you can open an issue there or ask a question there. Um, yeah, or we'll put them in the video comments. I look at both. Um, and if you ever make a game out of this, now bug free, let me know. I would love to know. I, I, if you make something cool, I'll, I'll link people to it. Like this code is for you to play with and do whatever you want to. Um, I don't know that I've explicitly mentioned that before. Uh, there is a license file that explains, but that's technical gobbledygook. So I'll just tell you in plain English, this code, you can claim it as your own. I don't care. It is yours to mess with. Um, yeah, make a game. I think that'd be awesome. The point of this is to enable people to make more games. So hopefully bug free ones. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you want to see more of these videos, of course, do all that silly YouTube subscription -y stuff. And uh, yeah, goodbye.